This is Mungo Dark Matter and welcome to Dark Matters. Uh, today before I tell you what our topic is, uh, you're probably wondering why I brought your way out here. Well I wanted to show you something really quick. Let me turn the camera around and we came way out here to look at something in particular. And there it is. It's a high power line. Today's topic is AC and DC power. And um, I want to discuss what they are and why we have both of them. Uh, originally, when Edison developed the light bulb, he started putting power plants out and they were generating DC power. The problem with DC power is if we were still using DC power to generate power and distribute it, we would need a lot more power stations because you cannot uh, transport over wires DC power as far as you can AC power. So that's why we have AC power. However, most things, if you've probably noticed, run on DC power. And so we have to spend time converting um, AC to DC power so that we can actually use it. Just wanted to show you the high voltage lines. What happens is they crank the power up to high voltage so they can distribute it over the lines. And they use transformers to step down the power to a power we can use. You've probably uh, seen um, gray cylindrical cans on certain uh, telephone poles or power poles uh, in your neighborhood and uh, those are actually transformers that step the power down. Alright, the main difference uh, between AC and DC power is that DC power has polarity to it that's in a constant direction. Uh, plus and minus, you've seen it on batteries. Uh, batteries are DC. Alternating current doesn't have a separate polarity on each wire. It's not going in the same direction. It switches back and forth. It alternates. So uh, each side of the circuit alternates between negative and positive, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, so most of the time when we're using AC power from our socket, we have a device within the device we're using that converts the power to the type of power that we need. There are two things that um, a power supply does on an electronic device. One thing is it steps down the power to a level that is needed. Solid state devices don't need that much power. A space heater needs a lot of power. So it steps it down say to 12 volts uh, and lowers the power on, on, on the device, but it also changes it to, to uh, DC. And the way it does that is it uses something called a rectifier. And um, a rectifier is made out of diodes, and, and diodes generally are designed so that they will only let current flow in one direction. And so by creating a rectifier, uh, a rectifier bridge, it cuts half of the the, uh, the the direction from the AC. So instead of going back and forth like this, it only allows the part of the signal that's coming in the one direction. And that converts it back into DC. Now, your house, the sockets are going to be AC. But in your car, everything is DC because it's running from a uh, DC generator, which they call the alternator, and it's running from a battery, which is, and batteries are, are always direct current. Uh, so you can have a generator that's either AC or DC, the design's slightly different, but basically it is a coil inside a magnet that turns around. Now the difference between a generator in an electric motor is that an electric motor you put power into it and it turns the shaft. 
with a generator you turn the shaft and it puts back out electricity so it's basically the same device but it's uh, it's the way you use it you can use it to to basically you use a generator to turn mechanical power into electrical power and you use a motor to turn electrical power back into mechanical power so it's really kind of a, a motor and a generator are really a type of converter really it's converting one power to another a, a electric to a physical power or a physical to electric power so your car basically has a generator in it but it's generating out um, DC current to your um, your car lighter and to the devices within your car. So you can get something called a power inverter, uh, which I'm going to do another video on, uh, and that will convert the power into AC power so that you can plug devices that are designed to take AC sockets into to your car and use it as uh, an emergency generator or a kind of a mobile generator. Always be careful whenever you're using an actual gas powered generator or a car as a gas powered generator. Cars and gas powered generators put out carbon monoxide so you don't want them in your garage while they're running because th the fumes can get inside your house. In fact it's a good idea probably to have a uh, carbon monoxide uh, detector uh, not just for for that circumstance but just in case carbon monoxide gets into your house it will warn you because uh, carbon monoxide you won't be able to detect it through your senses but it can still be there and uh, it will rob your body of oxygen and you'll just pass out and, and eventually die from that so carbon monoxide is very dangerous so always be careful with any gas powered engine uh, as far as getting it inside your house or your garage and having it run even near the house in some locations carbon monoxide could seep into your house. So be very, very, very careful. AC power, as I mentioned, is good for transmitting the power. And DC power is what most things run on. There are a few exceptions. There are AC motors and DC motors and AC generators and DC generators. So, like for instance, when you plug a fan into the wall, that's an AC motor on that fan. Uh, so that it takes the power directly from the wall without converting it because there's no reason to convert that to DC. You could actually have a DC motor and convert it over and run a fan. And uh, some smaller fans may actually be DC fans, but generally the bigger fans you get are AC. Also, um, like your air conditioning, and your heater, the fans and motors on there are going to be AC uh, because uh, there's no point in converting them over when you can put an AC motor directly in there. Your ceiling fans are going to be AC. Uh, light bulbs can run on AC, they can also run on DC. Uh, the design of some of the things may be slightly different depending on if it's AC or DC, but but basically these are the things that may run on on AC. Most electronics run on DC or pretty much all of them really. Any sort of uh, solid state electronics is actually running on DC. That's why you can use batteries on on many of the electronic devices that you have. In a solar system they have a power inverter too just like you would on a car so you can plug in regular uh, devices that are designed for AC. You may have noticed on some of your electronic devices that they'll have something they'll call wall warts or power supplies. And there's a cube, either where the plug is or somewhere on the power line. There's a fairly heavy cube of plastic that's encasing something or a plastic box. That's the power supply. And the power supply contains a transformer, which is... Um, basically a big coil. Power supplies are basically made out of transformers which are coils with iron cores and, and, and they're used to step down power just like the transformers on the line of the power company uses. And um, 
they also have a rectifier in them to switch over the power from AC to DC. Rectifiers aren't that big. Uh, so they're very small so that the bulk of most power supplies is the transformer. That's what's weighty in it and that's uh, what the size is. I'm Mungo Dark Matter and this has been Dark Matters and whatever you do enjoy technology. What you, what you want? What you, what you want? Come on.